Hey, Rob, it's Mrs. Wilkenbush. We are continuing Galaxy Games of Challengers by Greg R. Fishbone. Um, we're going to do chapter 13 today. Hey, I've been thinking about these book clubs. Are you guys doing some I wonders or kind of some predicting on how you think um, what's going to happen? This story especially, I bet you can think of all kinds of, make all kinds of predictions or think of all kinds of things. I wonder, oh gosh, I wonder what's going to happen um, in the inner solar system. I wonder what's going to happen with Ty. I wonder what's going to happen with with Daco, uh, Dakato. Uh, so, Dick. I can't even say his name. I haven't even started. So are you ready? Here we go. Chapter 13. Platte Bluff, Nevada. Eight hours before the most important event in human history. Tyler got dressed for school. Then he remembered it was Ty Sato Day and figured he'd probably get to stay home. After all, the entire world was having a name after something that was named after him. Tyler called his friends to wish them a happy Ty Sato Day and to tell them where to drop off their Ty Sato Day presents. But he wasn't fooling anybody. Even Brayden knew that the day wasn't really about Tyler, but it also wasn't really about the alien spaceship that shared Tyler's name. Mostly it seemed to be about getting over all of the stupid stuff they'd done the day before, when everyone thought that the world might end. Brayden said both of his parents Brayden's father was an on the way out. Now he couldn't even ask for his old job back. Lucas said his parents had taken all the money from their checking account. They'd gone shopping and spent every penny they had. They bought a new car, new clothes, expensive toys for Lucas and his brothers. Now that the world wasn't ending, they had to take it all back. John's father had gone into the desert on a vision quest to seek advice from his spirit guides. Is that the Shoshone tradition, Tyler asked? It's Lakota, I think, said John. Dad wanted to be covered just in case. It sounded cool to Tyler, except that John hadn't bought any food or his mobile phone, and he still hadn't returned with any wisdom from the spirit world. As for Eric, Tyler didn't know what his best friend's parents had done because Eric hung up on him seven times in a row. Tyler's dad had come home from the observatory when Tyler was in school to shower and sleep. He, had, he said he had a surprise for Tyler, but no gift could have been, been better than having his father home again. It felt like he'd been away for months. It's an exciting time to be an astronomer, said Tyler's dad, over a place, plate of scrambled eggs and veggie bacon. People are going to spend a lot more time looking at the stars now that we know there's not. Tell me more about my spaceship, said Tyler. Your spaceship? Well, it's still named after me, right? You could argue with the aliens about that. He tussled Tyler's hair. The, shape, the ship is shaped like a wedge of pie. If the pie were as wide across as a football field, it's coated with reflective metal, which is why we could see it from so far away. Well, when will it get here? That's hard to say, kiddo. The ship's been traveling at more than 9 million miles an hour, so it should reach Earth this afternoon. But we don't know whether the aliens will stop for a visit or even say hello. For all we know, they could just buzz right past us and keep on going. Have the aliens said anything, Tyler asked? Do we know if they're friendly? I wouldn't know anything about that, kiddo. My job has been to watch the ship. Others have been trying to listen to it. Tyler's mom came into the kitchen wearing diamond earrings and her best dress. Tyler wished he, he could send a picture to the TV stations. Then everybody would know his mom was only scary sometimes. Aren't you ready yet, she asked. They'll be here any minute. Who? asked Tyler. She looked at Tyler's dad. Didn't you tell him? I wanted it to be a surprise. Go, 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 Tyler's mom told him. Wash your face, comb your hair, ain't that shirt. Wear the blue one, I think. No, the blue one. All right, Tyler ran to the bathroom, pulled on the door. It was locked, of course. Come on, Amanda, today is Ty Sato Day, and I'm Ty Sato. You, can have, you have to let me have a turn in the bathroom on Ty Sato Day. I don't have to let you do anything. Mom, Tyler shouted, make Amanda give me a the bathroom. Don't be such a baby, his sister said through the door. There'll be the bathroom that you can use on the plane. Plane? He asked, what plane? The doorbell rang. Tyler wondered if Eric had come to apologize for being such a jerk. He didn't have to forgive him, but he probably would. 
It was Ty's auto day, and Tyler was in a good mood. He opened the door. Two soldiers stood on the front porch. Real soldiers with green uniforms and flat black hats. Sado family, said the first soldier. Tyler nodded. We're here to escort you to the airport. I just, um, bathroom, Tyler babbled. I mean, I'm just waiting for the bathroom, sir. The soldiers laughed, and one of them told Tyler, Eddie, soldier, I'll tell mom and dad you're here, Tyler said, and we'll be ready as quick as we can. I hope so, said one of the soldiers. The president of the United States doesn't like to be kept waiting. Ooh. In our solar system, 65 million miles from Earth, the pilot of the silver spaceship met with Captain Mavrazo. Captain, I know you don't care about the appalling lack of navigation beacons in this system, but do you have any idea how the natives with us to approach their planet? I detected quite a number of artificial satellites in the orbit, but no welcome center, tourist facilities, or lodging floats of any kind. I don't know, pilot. It seems rude of them not to supply better instructions. Just put us in a stable orbit and I'll do the rest. The pilot hissed steam through his nose holes. Perhaps I could find some information from their broadcast. Our translation system was not faulty after all. That is good to hear, said the captain. Have you determined what a TV saddle might what a tie saddle might be? Among the residents of Earth, tie saddle could have several meanings. It can be a large asteroid or the nickname they've given to our vessel. It also seems to be the name of a child living in one of their desert regions. A child? The Madranian girl blinked her eyes, her three eyes in unison. Here is an image of him with his mother parent. The pilot projected an image of the Earth broadcast. Captain Mafraza whistled through her nose, her nose holes. That wild hair, that twisted face, I've never seen such a frightening creature. We should leave this system, said the pilot. No, pilot, we must continue. The honor of the Madrian is sake. She looked at the image of the Earth's child mother parent again and shivered so hard that her tentacles flailed around like whips. I believe I'm going to have nightmares. Tokyo, Japan. Five hours before the most important event in human history, Dekai woke to some loud throat clearing in the middle of the night. So he his roll with a big carbon box in his hand. Dekai son, are you awake? Barely. Dekai rubbed his eyes and yawned. Good. I was hoping you'd be awake because I didn't want to wake you. Tamako dropped the box with a thud that shook the to Matsi floor. I went home for some of my things, my frivolous things. The Obi, the, my frivolous thing is Obi Chan calls them. That's nice, Takai wondered when Tamako would come to the point and if the point would be worth ruining his good night's sleep. They're yours now, she stated. Don't. Mine. All my frivolous things. Obi Chan always wanted me to throw them away. But I think it's better to have someone else to appreciate them. Dekai rolled over and peered into the box. Inside was a treasure trove of Hunter Elf Zeta merchandise. You're giving this to me? Yeah, see? Have a look, Tamako. Tamako began pulling items from the box. Here's my video collection, an almost complete set of UFO catcher plush dolls, a soundtrack from the first season, super deformed figures, a foldable plastic line, Model, and a whole bunch of magazines and posters. The, the posters were have tape on the on the backs because I was in a hurry. But you should be able to peel them off. Dekai shook, shook his head. Tamako-chan, I can't accept these things. They're important to you, and you're going to want them back. Is that a genuine animation cell? Tamako removed a transparent plastic sheet from the box. Two characters from the show that were hand painted on it. It's Zeta and Anti-Zeta from episode 38, autographed by the voice cross too. It's meant to have a handed it with careful hands. I can't take this if you're going to throw it in. It's a collector's edition. Tamako and Ada. Okay, I'll take this. And I'd like to 
read the magazines, but I can go back and finish. Like that. And then, oh, I almost forgot. Tamako removed the colorful data that came from her keys and dropped it into the box. That you do. But that's your luck. But that's your good luck. Bobby Chan doesn't believe in luck. Tamako said. She calls it my most frivolous thing of all. Chapter 13. Oh my goodness, this is getting good, don't you think, guys? Until next time.